Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the inaugural Olympic Lifestyle Food for Thought Live Series. How about a round of applause? <laughs> my, na my name is Donovan Jacobs, and it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you guys here tonight. There's a special guy in behind all of this. He has, he's a professional chef, hotel manager, retirement and lifestyle specialist for more than 25 years. And he's been dreaming about this event for tonight. And it's become a reality. He has been traveling around the world to more than 20 countries with various teams for South Africa cooking many international cuisines. And tonight, he's here to entertain us with another special guest with you, whom we will hear about a bit later. Yeah? Help me introduce Mr. Donovan Kotzer to this amazing event, and he's going to make this special. A round of applause. Good evening, everyone. Happy to see you all. Nice crowd this evening. Welcome to all the Curo students that are here this evening. Just a short introduction. As you've heard, Donovan, it might seem a bit confusing, but we're both Donovans. And uh, quite a weird story. He was actually at my wedding day 25 years ago. That's how we've come back together. But yeah, interesting times, food for thought, an initiative about bringing seniors and youth together. Now you might think, why? In our country, we've got a lot of unemployment. We've got tons of seniors, doctors, lawyers, attorneys, engineers, sitting in retirement estates, wanting to give back, but there's no platform. Our youngsters have got challenges today because of lack of employment. So we're bringing these groups together to create some excitement, to have a lot of fun. You'll see this evening, it's like, being in your dining room, chatting to each other. We've got a phenomenal celebrity guest that will be introduced in a minute or so. But we're going to have a few moments of an interview, interaction with the young people, and then we will go into a cooking demonstration. So I want you to just sit back, enjoy the moment, enjoy this inaugural event of Food for Thought. But now I'm really privileged and really honored to welcome our celebrity guest this evening. And I must tell you, she is a very powerful woman. Strong mentally, physically. You're going to hear a lot from her now this evening. And I want you to give a warm welcome to Mariska Strauss. Nice Hello. to have you. Good. Take a seat. Hello, yeah. I'm sure when you walked in, you saw that amazing bike in the foyer. Well, I can tell you that is a bike that's been everywhere. <laughs> All over the world. All over the world. And World Cup, she's represented South Africa. The epic, I'm sure we've just watched not so long ago. But she's been, she's taken part in the epic quite a few times. And tonight... It's an opportunity just to in, uh, interact with each other for the benefit of our young people as well. And ultimately, at the end of the day, is what we want to do is to inspire our youth and also get the insight into what makes a champion. Because that, to me, is something interesting that I always want to know and want to find out. And yeah, what I want to just say, and we can start the interaction, that... What's the major highlights for you in your achievements as a cyclist, a mountain bike professional? Oh my goodness, that's a, that's a biggie, especially if you've been racing for, what's it now, 22 years. Um, there's a couple of things that come to mind, definitely World Cup podiums, the Eliminator and the Marathon, podiuming at the Absolute Epic, 
uh, winning South African champs 16 times. It's, <laughs> there's, there's quite a few moments. Um, so it's, it's basically everything just becomes one big blur and you definitely have like little bits. But working with the youth and seeing young kids actually loving this, falling in love with the sport, that's definitely part of the highlights for me. Excellent. I must tell you something interesting. When Mariska and I met for the first time, we clicked immediately because as a chef, you know, accidents happen in the kitchen. And I've had an accident. And, you know, at home it's quite interesting because my kids, they enjoy it because there's not often you can say to um, your children or people at work, you know, I need four and a half kgs of meat today and then lift up your hand and show them four and a half kgs because you've got a half a finger and four other fingers. And believe it or not, yeah, we are both the same. <laughs> We've both got a set finger. So when it comes to maths, when it comes to working with food, four and a half is quite a nice opportunity to be able to say to each other. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you know, injuries happen in the kitchen, but it also... Things that happen bring in life. people together, and it's life. Yeah. And what I want to know is, what is your hobbies outside of cycling? What do you enjoy doing? <laughs> One thing I do know, you're a very good artist. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's actually recent. Um, I started dabbling in oil painting, which I really fell in love with, um, especially now. I don't know if you guys know my story, so... I got diagnosed at the beginning of Feb with a heart condition, so I'm taking a sabbatical from racing, uh, which has been a completely different experience for me, obviously, from like training 20 to 30 hours a week to not being allowed to walk more than an hour. Um, so I've, I've started dabbling in things, archery, oil painting. Um, I'm actually a qualified massage therapist as well. I'm a qualified BSc sports scientist. Um, and so I do coaching on the side. So there's actually quite a few things I keep myself busy with. Wow, <laughs> that's quite amazing. And you can see for young people, you know, to have diverse interests is a good thing. You know, sometimes sure. we focus just on one thing and that's where we stay. But look at all those differences. And, you know, try things, try new things. That's the exciting part. And, you know, when I look at some of these highlights of your life, Mariska, rank your top your top five priorities, your top five achievements, what would you say that would be? Oh my goodness, my top five priorities. So my faith is definitely right up there. Um, family and friends. My health. <laughs> um, my husband. And racing bikes. <laughs> and after your health now that's, you know, is on the mend, you've had your first cycle now from the electric bike to the normal bike. Yes, so yesterday was the first day I officially got onto my, to my steed that's standing out there. Man, I love that bike. It's such a joy to ride. Just like, this is the fun part about taking a break from things. You like, when you get back onto it, you're like, actually, yeah, I really do enjoy this. <laughs> um, so it was, a, it was a nice experience again. And I'm definitely not race fit by any means. Um, so just trying to get back into the swing of things, but really, really nice to, to be able to ride a bike up a hill by myself. Awesome. But tell me something. You said you did a race and you broke your hip. Yes, I've actually broken both my hips. So I'm balanced now. <laughs> <laughs> Life's about balance, guys. Um, it really helps with my OCD. It was, it was, it was bad. Uh, no, so last year I broke my hip in Czech Republic, got airlifted out of a race and actually got COVID twice. So I got COVID twice, broke my hip, and this was all the span of two months, I think. Um, it was just before Commonwealth Games. So I was, I was literally on my way to the airport and then Sascock phoned me. They're like, actually, you're not, you're not going to Commonwealth Games. You, you have to stay home. You tested positive. So that was definitely, okay smack over the head. Well, look, I think COVID for, for many of us, I think everyone in the audience, the youngsters, we've all got a story about COVID, what it's done 
be it in business, be it in our normal life, I think it's all affected us. And ultimately, yeah, we, we come out stronger on the other side. But what do you do to prepare for a race, a big race like that? From a nutritional point of view and an exercise point of view, what do you have to Ooh, put in? A lot. <laughs> Um, it's it's more it becomes a lifestyle so being an athlete it sounds very glamorous there's a lot of things that go in behind the scenes and that has to happen perfectly to have the best race possible and yeah it, it, it literally you eat sleep breathe your sport and I think that's the case with any any big goal or anything major that you want to commit to you, you really have to commit to it um, but a lot of discipline, so you, I mean, it, to me, it's, it actually, it becomes my norm. So eating healthily, it's not a, it's not a, like a, a add on thing that, oh, okay, now I'll, oh, I'll eat healthily for the next two weeks type of thing. It, it literally is what you do every day. So it's, it's nothing strange for me. So it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes a lifestyle. You literally adapt and it become your, it becomes your normal. And your, your nutrition that you take in versus your, your exercise, do you balance that out? What do you, <laughs> so, so the plus part of me being on my sabbatical is I basically eat half the amount of food, which is great because the food prices have skyrocketed. Um, <laughs> really enjoying that part. Missing the food, though. Uh, but it's a, it's a lot of pastas. Oh, actually, I don't eat pasta. I'm gluten-free. This is also now a new thing for me. Um, with COVID and all my health stuff that's come up. Apparently, I'm not allowed to eat gluten anymore, which kind of sucks. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of things have changed, but I do eat a lot of rice, um, potatoes, starches, and then also you, you do need your protein. So generally speaking, the normal population actually don't consume enough protein as is. So that's one thing that I really have to focus on um, and try and up that. And yeah, basically just consume food and train. <laughs> Excellent. Mariska, tell me something. What, what bit of advice could you give to youngsters that are in a trick that want to take on a, a professional career, be it in any sport? What, what does it take? What do you, what's a bit of advice you could give them? Oh, commitment. Commitment and discipline and consistency. It's, it's not enough to be excellent at something. You really need to be consistent at it. Um, you can be a little bit less talented, but if you're consistent at it and work at it diligently, you'll reap the rewards. Excellent, excellent. Bonavent, don't you want to give the, the mic to Keegan? <laughs> Keegan, what's the question you want, that you'd like to pose to Mariska? Mariska. Hello. Um, I have a question for you. What would you say was your biggest challenge that I had to overcome to become professional? Oh, goodness. Getting, well, actually getting into the pro level. Well, so my sport is based mainly in Europe. So getting into that scene and being kind of accepted as a South African, that was probably one of the most challenging parts. It's, it's a lot of money for us. Um, to get over there and to get based there and to then be accepted into that community. It takes, it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> I know cycling is a very expensive sport. Yeah. So for anybody starting, how would you recommend about going to get into it by getting sponsors and getting everything? Um, try your clubs. For sure. Okay. I don't know if Kiro has cycling as a school sport. No clue. Unfortunate. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, yeah, so clubs is a definite, a definite easy um, point to, to enter into. And then make friends. Uh, it's not about the grades you make, it's about the hands you shake. Um, I like that. Get your good. connections, talk to people, and don't be scared to ask. Um, asking is free. And it's, it's literally the, the worst they can say is no. So don't be shy to ask questions and to, to ask for help as well. Um, but I think a good starting point would definitely be your local bike shop. All right, thank you.
Okay, sorry. Um, I just wanted to ask, I know we touched on it and that whole COVID era, but <laughs> how did COVID affect your cycling career and your lifestyle as a cyclist? Sure. Um, quite a bit. So I got COVID right off the bat. I was actually in Spain when it, when it came about. I was busy doing a race and everybody's like, oh, did you hear about this Wuhan virus? And I was like, no, <laughs> what is that? It's never going to get here. Um, and by the time we left, things were starting to shut down. So it, it got real really quickly. And I got back and I actually turned out I was positive as well. So I, ooh, it took me about six weeks to get back to, to normal racing vibes, which was fine because that was locked down anyway. Um, and then I actually couldn't get over to Europe because everything was closed down. And as South Africans, it's a mission to travel. So we really struggled to get my visas approved and all of those things. So I can race for the first bit. I eventually got over. And then, yeah, it was besides the, the travel logistics side of things, just actually racing was a mission. I, my body was completely affected, as turned out with all the stuff that turned out now. Um, it, it, I think it knocked me harder than I realized. Amazingly, I still achieved an SA Champs, an African Champ, um, and some really cool results. But now I'm kind of at a point where I'm like, maybe I should have taken off a bit longer. Um, but it's, it's definitely affected. It's, it's starting to, to come back now to normal, which is really cool. Events are opening up. Um, I, th I remember in COVID, we did, I did a couple of World Cup races and I don't know if you guys see, have seen World Cup racing on TV. It's literally in Europe, cycling is like rugby is here. So you, on a track, it's a four kilometer track and there's literally like, the entire track is just surrounded by people and it's like three people deep. So it's just like this mass of people and like cowbells going and it's such an atmosphere. And in COVID, it was literally nobody was there. It was not a, no. a single person was allowed on the track. So you're like racing and it literally felt like a training ride because you're like, <laughs> where's everyone? <laughs> um, so that was bizarre, but it's really cool to, to get back to normal racing and actually having events where people are allowed to spectate. So it's getting there and it's, it's slowly opening up again. So I think we're basically back to normal. That's amazing. I can't even imagine the immense struggle you would have had to gone through gone through with um, lockdown and things like that and having curfews and not being able to go out on the roads and actually yeah, cycle. Like me and my husband were stuck inside the estate so we literally we didn't have furniture which helped so we were like doing <laughs> laps in the house on the bikes um, but I think it helped me a bit that I was forced to be off the bike for six weeks <laughs> so I, I have friends that literally did like a 20 four kilometer run around their house. Wow. So it's, it's, it's weird as an athlete because it's literally you eat, sleep and breathe your sport. And that was taken away. Um, but I'm kind of in a similar situation now, but at least I can like move around a bit more than we, when we, than we did in, in lockdown. That's amazing. Thanks. One more question. Any, any one of the youngsters with one more question? Anyone got a question? No? Well, I, want just, I want to just highlight something that you said, Mariska, and I think it's important for the young people as well. And I've got a lot of people in the audience here this evening that, you know, yes, mountain biking is expensive. And I think every sport is expensive. And the thing is, it's taking risks, going to speak to people, and grabbing the opportunities. You know, we've got a lot of partners in the audience tonight. There's 40 partners as part of the show. And, you know, a lot of people will say, unemployment's high, there's not a lot of opportunity. Let me tell you, you just have to talk to some of the audience here tonight. They come from corporate companies, and they've got involved. If you're enthusiastic, if you're committed, there are wonderful companies that are prepared to sponsor a sportsman out there, but you've got to go and do the hard work. And sometimes, you know, we don't want to do the hard work, we want to just to land in our laps, but... You can hear from Mariska, it takes hard work, commitment. And there's one word that really I, I latch onto, consistency. You've got to do it all the time. 
You can't do it one day and two weeks' time again. It's got to be a, a lifestyle change and a daily thing. Sorry, Donovan, can I just jump in there? Yes. I just wanted to say one more thing. The sport is expensive, yes. But looking back, the sport paid for my university degree. So it gives back. It gives back. And the, the connections I've made through cycling has been phenomenal. It's, it's friendships and it's sponsorships that's become friendships that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> but now I think it's time to go into the cooking demonstration. We're going to do something fun together and just to let you know, We've got youngsters here tonight. They come from various backgrounds at school, from tourism. I always forget this. Consumers. Consumers. Yeah. I, I, we used to call it something else. High South Kinder. Economics. High South Kinder. <laughs> so from a tourism background that they're studying and consumers. And tonight we've got a, a Western Province hockey player that's Ooh. sitting in the white chef's kit that's nice. been nominated and put into a whole chef's gear kit by the company called Chef's Gear. And this is how we want to do things. We want to uplift youngsters. We want to get them involved in cooking in different industries and show them that there's a lot of fun out there. There's a lot of excitement out there and there are opportunities. And now I just want to ask you if you can give us two minutes. I'm just going to do a quick change. Um, I promise you, you don't want me to take my top off in front of you, so <laughs> I've just got to go outside quickly. There will be a quick break for two minutes. I ask you not to leave because I want to get through the cooking program straight away. So give me two minutes, the music will come on, and I'll be back in a second. Thank you very much.
do I move you? Ready. Awesome. Key can come join us up here. I feel like Thanks, I need to step aside. I don't have an apron or anything. Oh, I have an apron. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Ah, oh, this is serious. <laughs> oh, we go. better noise. Come and Keegan, tie, be a gentleman then tie. Well, time, tie me. How do you do this? Uh, Am I doing it right? Step, perfect. I think I need to go another time. Maybe another time. There we go. <laughs> Good effort. <laughs> Great stuff. Let me just do something. Yeah, if in doubt, floor it. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a bit of fun. And, you know, when it comes to cooking, the part of tonight's show, what it's about is that young people in the audience, yourselves, you're going to be able to do what I do quickly. And again, the whole purpose about doing this is about doing something now that anyone at home can put together. Because we all work long jobs, we all work long hours. When you come home, you want to do something quickly. But you want it to be tasty, and you want it to be look good, you want it to look good, and you want it to be quick. So, what we're going to do tonight is called the savory pinwheel. Now, you know, yes, we could have made pastry here tonight. We could have stood here for an hour folding pastry. You've got to do it seven times. It's with butter, all kinds of things. That's not going to happen at home. So, you know, you get good products, nice pastry, flaky pastry, which is today's. You can take it. It comes and rolls out into a nice, nice long shape. And basically, you've got your rectangular square. And now you get ready to basically prepare a savory pinwheel, which looks like a Swiss roll ultimately at the end of the day. Has anyone done something like this before in the audience? Oh, we've got some good cooks here. Awesome. Now, Mariska, I'm going to ask you to do something for oh. us to start the process. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> Give this me the marinara is a savory sauce. tomato glaze, basically, like a pizza base. <gasps> and what's so nice is you can actually play with your kids and actually do this at home and you can make your own little pizzas if you don't want to roll it all up. But Mariska, I'm going to ask you to take that and just... Do I just swish it on there? Just swish it all on there. Okay, can do that. Go. There we go, that's perfect. But I want to tell the audience, when you do the savory pinwheel, flavor is a big thing. And for any home cook, to deal with heat, to deal with acids, to deal with fats, and to deal with salt. If you can play with those four things and get it right, That's I'm right. telling you, everyone can cook. You just smear it up. Mm. What I'm going to ask you to do is just to take a little bit off, back into the bowl. I can do that. That's perfect. Like a pizza. Has anyone seen something like this before? Now, please, um, before the show, I've had some funny comments. About <laughs> And no, it's not, it doesn't belong to the Catholic Church when they do some baptisms or anything like that. But this is called an infusion bomb. And what actually happens is you put all your spices in here. So everything from cardamoms to your, um, your peppercorns to uh, star anise to cinnamon, you put in here and then you throw that into your pot. 
that actually deals with Hey, sous slavery. chef, am I doing this right? Yep, you're doing it right. You're doing perfectly. Perfectly. <laughs> okay, direct me. No, that's good. It's good. Is it good? <laughs> and ultimately, at the end of the day, I believe every home should have one of these because to should put I get in flavor, like everywhere? who's bit into a should cardamom get it before? Everywhere? When you have a nice curry, mm. okay. there's I nothing worse. This. Nothing worse. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I can tell you, a lot of the, all the products that are available and what we're dealing with here tonight, you'll be sent on email. If you're interested in anything, we'll get something like that to you because you get various nice little variants of the actual infusion. But now, that's been done so awesomely. Now it's the next job. Now what you can do is you can put bacon on, you can put spicy sausage on, you can put any type of meat product you actually want to do onto this. So now, you guys, the two of you guys, just pack it full of some nice... Sausage? <laughs> there we go. Are we using our hands? To work, Show, okay. so that's great stuff. Do you just sprinkle yeah, it? Sprinkle it oh. You can sprinkle it, you can pack it on. I never knew you could sprinkle sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Is it enough? That's awesome. That's awesome. And after you've got your protein, what you do now is you take any cheese that you like. And obviously, the one that always goes down well is mozzarella. So now you just sprinkle mozzarella over the top. Come, Keith, and get that? your hands dirty. Come on. No, you're being too, like, skimpy on the cheese there. <laughs> Awesome, awesome stuff, awesome <laughs> stuff. Great stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, now, you know, if you enjoy growing herbs at home, if you enjoy fresh herbs, you can take fresh thyme, you can sprinkle it onto the actual base of this. What you can see here is some fantastic range spices, and I can tell you something. These guys are called spiceologists. They actually put blends together to make it actually very easy. And all you have to do now, you've got rosemary, you've got salt, you've got pepper. There's a nice flavoring on top of your savory pinwheel. And now it gets to the fun. Are we rolling? Do you just want to try and roll it up? See me rolling. Here we go. Take a side and let's, let's roll it up. Why aren't you helping me? <laughs> Come on. You can, you, can, you, can do, you can do that one. It's like a team effort. Does it need to be tight? As tight as possible. Okay. As tight as possible. See, that's why you're helping me. <coughs> Go there. Awesome. That's looking great. It's oh. looking great. <laughs> Made with love. <laughs> there we go. And now... Basically, what will happen is, I'm going to do a bit of a quick demonstration there. You've rolled it up into your Swiss roll. Give us a second just to give this a bit of a wipe down because Keegan knows how to mess. <laughs> do I have got an apron? You want to use my apron? <laughs> Who said that's true? <laughs> Daniel again. Okay, great stuff. Now we're going to get ready to plate to oh. make this really look... Awesome. Master Chefy. Because again, the savory pinwheel, once you've rolled it up, you cut it into nice slices. And ladies and gentlemen, you basically get a nice filling that's inside. And then you pack it, you pack it on a nice baking, baking pan. And let's face it, I think everyone's got an air fryer these days. And to make things a lot easier, it's packing it in an air fryer, cooking it off for 20 minutes. And that's how quick it is. And you've got a meal, and I tell you, it's flavorsome. You can add it with so many different things. And obviously, we all eat with our eyes. And we want to make, we want to make our food look good. So the Swiss roll has been put together. And now, what's always a nice accompaniment is different cheeses. Be inventive. Get a different cheese together with your savory pinwheels. Do you want to create, we've got some nice cucumber, oh. strawberry, and yellow pepper. Create a nice little 
Oh, this is a little salad ooh. together on each side. You do one. Please. Okay, and challenge we'll accepted. There we oh, go. There we go. There we go. Why is it like cut like that? Do you have to like swish it into? No, you don't oh. have to. You do it. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. There we go. Come on, show us some some stuff there, Keegan. I feel like he's got an advantage here. Okay, I see what you do. Okay, let's copy him. No. Excellent. Looking good. Thanks, and ladies chef. and gentlemen, there you Shots can see the, the savory pinwheel is actually made oh. and actually cooked. <laughs> and how it comes through, the colors come through, the protein gets cooked, the spices come through, <laughs> put a nice little cheese together, and... After they have finished with that, we'll pack some pinwheels on. And one of the partners that we've got together is Willow Creek. Like and I must tell you, you'll see over here they've got some reductions. A. Anything you can think of, from chili to garlic. And I tell you, if you want flavor, this is where you get flavor. And from there, guys, pack three pinwheels Ooh. on each plate. Any way you want to. Any way you want to. You come, Keegan. Isn't that a song? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Excellent. Now, let's just open some of this balsamic. And a nice... The nice thing with it is it's got a nice consistency, it's got a nice thickness to it, and, whoops, that's... that's oh, he <laughs> <laughs> messed up your work of art. That's your art. Work, Keegan. That's <laughs> <laughs> your pain. <laughs> but again, just a little bit of a drizzle over the top, gives a hell of a lot of flavour, and ladies and gentlemen, there's a quick dish. I can see the artistry coming right. out of what you've just done. Thank right. you, Keegan. <laughs> Excellent. That's great stuff. Thanks, Chef. <laughs> yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, got any questions? Anyone want to ask any questions from the audience? No? Mm. Ask us a question. My name is Marcella Magui. Uh, I want to know if Mariska made the uh, uh, bike there when she was preparing the <laughs> I can tell you something. Mariska can build you any bike that you want. She's actually got skills to build bikes for any person that wants to take on cycling. So if you want to take on cycling, oh Mariska can build you a nice, wonderful bicycle and she'll yeah. present it in a wonderful way as you can see. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, a lot of fun. What you'll find is on the video itself, you can go back onto YouTube, you can go and watch the, the actual cooking process will be on there, the menu will be on there, the recipe will be on there. Go have fun. But I've got a challenge for you guys. Because I'm going to put the recipe online, and I want you guys in the next week or two to, to go and make this recipe. Present it like Mariska and oh. Keegan did. Because we're going to actually put a recipe book together of every show, of every item that we cook on the show. And over time, we'll build a recipe book with our partners, putting stuff together. Because look, let's face it, load shedding is not our friend. And an air fryer works very well. You'll see lower down, we work on an EcoFlow power inverter that actually allows you to cook the whole process tonight. One other thing that's very unique to the actual EcoFlow is a product called an EcoChef induction two-plate stove. Let me tell you, ladies Ooh. and gentlemen, if you want to be caught like load shedding catches us halfway in your food preparation period, you've got to have one of these. They're amazing. They use 50% less electricity. It works on the EcoFlow system, and you can cook anything on it. It's awesome. But anyway, there will be a lot more coming out on email that you can take a look at the products that we've used tonight. After the event now, there's a nice testing table of different cheeses, of different um, 
reductions from Willow Creek. There's some wonderful preserves from Old Cape Farm Store. I can tell you, your taste buds will do a jig. There's wonderful wine that's available for free at the bar as well. I want you to enjoy yourself, try some stuff, be inventive. There's some wonderful preserves and jams that have been put together. But if there's no more questions from the audience, I just want to say a special thank you to the young people of Kuro Durbanville High School for being here this evening. And I want to just say again, please let's give a real big round of applause for Amiriska. My commie chef on the left, thank you very much. <laughs> awesome. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it from this evening. I must just inform you that there will be new episodes coming up in the next couple of weeks. We'll inform everyone. We've got some wonderful new superstars coming on board that will actually be part of it. So look out for the adverts. Mariska, thank you for inspiring us. Because I must say... Thanks for having me. Just listening to your whole background, what you made of, we need role models in life. And I think our youngsters even more so. And get involved, take your chances. There's lots of opportunity out there. Speak to some of the people in the audience. They're part of the sponsors and partners here this evening. Let's have fun. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you being with us here this evening. Let's go have a snack together and a glass of wine. Thank you very much.